Hi there, let me take the pleasure of welcoming you to this Azure tutorial. I'm Sam, an Azure Cloud Architect working for Simply Learn, and I'm more than glad to walk you through this session where we're going to talk about Azure in great length and breadth. And if you're looking for a video that talks and walks you through all the services in Azure, then this could be one of the best video you could find in the internet. And without any further delay, let's get started. Everybody likes stories, eh? So let's get started with a story. In a city not so far away, a CEO had plans to expand his company globally and called one of his IT personnel for an IT opinion. And this guy has been in the company for a long time and is very seasoned with the company's uh, infra. And he nicely answered the questions with what he foresaw. And he said, I have a good news and a bad news for us to go global. And he starts with the good news. He said, sir, we're well on our way to become one of the world's largest shipping company. And the bad news is, however, our data centers have almost run out of space and setting up new ones around the world would be too expensive and very time consuming. Now the IT personnel, let's call him Mike, now he explains the situation from how he saw it. But the CEO had done some homework about how he was going to do it and he answered Mike saying don't worry about that Mike I've come up with a solution for a problem and it's called Microsoft Azure well Mike is an hard-working and honest IT professional working for that company but he did not spend time on learning the latest technologies and he asked this question very honestly oh how does it solve a problem and the CEO begins to explain Azure to Mike and he starts with what is cloud computing and then he goes on and talks about Azure and the services offered by Azure and why Azure is better than the other cloud providers and what are the great companies that uses Azure and how they got benefited out of it and then he winds it all up with the use cases of Azure. So he begins his explanation saying Microsoft Azure is known as the cloud service provider and it works on the basis of cloud computing. Now Microsoft Azure is formerly known as Windows Azure and it's uh, Microsoft's public cloud computing platform. It also provides a range of uh, cloud services including some of them are compute, analytics, storage and networking. We can always pick and choose from these services to develop and scale our applications or even plan on running existing applications in the public cloud. Microsoft Azure is both a platform as a service and infrastructure as a service. Let's now fit their conversation out and let's talk about what is cloud computing, Azure, services offered by Azure, how is Azure leading when compared to other cloud service providers and what are the companies that are using Azure. Let's talk about that. In simple terms, cloud computing is being able to access compute services like servers, storage, database, networking, software analytics, intelligence, and a lot more over the internet, which is the cloud. With the uh, flexibility of the resources that we use, like anytime I want a resource, I can use one and it becomes available immediately and anytime if I want to retire a resource I can simply retire a resource and not pay for it and we also typically pay only for the services that we use and this helps greatly with our operating cost to run our infrastructure more efficiently and scale our environment up or down depending on the business needs and changes and all the servers and storages and databases and networking all that are accessed through the network of remote systems or remote computers hosted in the internet typically in the provider's data center which is Azure in this case now we don't use any physical server or an on-premises server here well we still use physical servers and VMs you know hosted on a hardware or a physical server but they're all in the provider's environment and none of them sit on premises or in our data center. We only access them remotely. It looks and feels the same except for the fact that they are in a remote location. We access them remotely 
do all the work remotely and when we're done we can shut it down and not pay for them so some of the use cases some of the use cases of cloud computing are creating applications and services the other use cases are storing or using cloud for storage alone if there is one thing that ever grows in our organization is the storage every new day there is a new storage requirement and it's very dynamic it's very hard to predict and if we go out and buy a big storage capacity up front and till we use the storage capacity fully the empty storages you know we're wasting money on them so instead i can go for a storage which scales dynamically that's in the cloud put storage or put data in the cloud and pay only for what you're storing and for the next month if you have deleted or flushed out some files or data pay less for it so it's a very dynamic storage in the cloud and a lot of companies are getting benefited from storing data in the cloud because of its uh, dynamic in nature and the cost that comes along with it the cheap cost that comes along with it and also they give a lot of the providers like azure they give uh, a uh, data replication for free they promise an sla along with the data we store in the cloud so there's an sla attached to it and they also provide data recoveries as well if in case something goes wrong with the physical disk where our data is stored azure automatically makes our data available from the redundant or other places where it had stored our data because of the sla they wanted to keep the other use case for azure is hosting websites and running blogs using the compute service be it uh, storing music and letting your users stream the music azure is a good place to store music and stream the music with the benefit of uh, cdn content delivery network which allows us to stream a uh, video or audio files with great speed you know with that with azure our audio or video application works seamlessly because they are provided to the client with very low latency and that improves the customer experience for our application azure compute service is a good place for delivering software on demand there are a lot of softwares embedded softwares that we can buy using azure and everything on a pay as you go service model so anytime we need a software we can go out and immediately buy the software for the next 1 hour or 2 hour let's say and use them and then return it back we're not bound to any yearly licensing cost by that azure computing services has analytic available for us with which we can analyze get a good visualization of what's going on in a network be it logs be it the performance be it the metrics you know instead of looking at logs and searching logs and trying to do manual things over the heaps and heaps of logs that we have saved azure analytics services helps us to get a good visual of what's going on in the network where have we dropped where have we increased or what's causing what's the major driver what is the top 10 errors that we get in the server in the application stuff like that those can be easily gathered from the azure analytic services now cloud is really a very cool term for the internet a good uh, analogy would be looking back anytime uh, we look at a diagram when we do not know how things are transferred we simply draw a cloud right for example a mail gets sent from a person in one country to a person in the other country a lot of things happening in between from the time you hit the send button and the time the other person hits the read button right and we the, the simple and the easiest way of uh, putting it in a picture is simply draw a cloud and on the one end one person will be sending the email and on the other end the other person will be reading the email so a cloud is a really cool term for the internet now that's some basics about cloud computing Now that we've understood about cloud computing in general, let's talk about Microsoft Azure as a cloud service. Now Microsoft Azure is a set of cloud services to build, manage and deploy applications on a network with the help of Microsoft Azure's frameworks. 
Now, Microsoft Azure is a computing service created by Microsoft basically for building, testing, deploying, and managing applications and services through a global network of Microsoft managed data centers. Now, Microsoft Azure provides SaaS, which is software as a service, and PaaS, which is platform as a service, and IaaS, infrastructure as a service, and they support many different programming languages, tools, and framework. And those tools and framework include both Microsoft specific and third party software. Now, let me pick and talk about a specific service, for example, management. Azure Automation provides a way for us to automate the manual, long running, and frequently repeated tasks that are commonly performed tasks both in cloud and enterprise environment. It saves us a lot of time and increases the reliability and it kind of gives a good administrative control and even schedules the task automatically to be performed on a regular basis. To give you a quick history of Microsoft Azure, it was launched on 1st February 2010 and it was awarded or it was called an industry leader for infrastructure and platform as a service by uh, Gartner. Now Gartner is the world's leading research and advisory company. This Microsoft Azure supports a number of programming languages like C Sharp, Java and Python. All these cool services we get to use and pay only for how much we use. For example, if we use for an R, we only get to pay for an R. Even the costliest system available. And if we use them for an R, we only pay for that particular R and then we're done. No more billing on the resource that we have used. Microsoft Azure has spread itself more than 50 regions around the world. So it's quite easy for us to pick a region and you know, start provisioning and running our applications probably from day one because the infrastructure and the tools and technologies needed to run our application are already available. All that we have to do is commit the code in that particular region or build an application and launch it in that particular region and they become live starting day one. Now because we have 50 regions around the world, we can very carefully design our environment to provide low latency services to our customers. All right, instead of in traditional data center, let's say, you know, customers will have to or their request will have to travel all the way around the globe to reach a data center which lives in the other side of the planet. And this adds more latency to it. And it is really not feasible to build a data center uh, near each customer location because of the cost involved. But with Azure, it's possible. Azure already has data centers around the world. And all that we have to do is just pick a data center, build an environment there. They're available starting day one, number one. And also the cost is considerably saved because we are using a public cloud instead of an physical infrastructure to serve those customers from a very local location. And the services that Azure is offering is ever increasing. As of now, as we speak, we have like 200 plus services offered and uh, they span through different domain or different platform or different technologies available within the Azure console portal. Now we're going to talk about that later in this section. So hold your breath till we talk about it. But for now, just know that we have like 200 plus services offered by Azure. Let's now talk about different services in Azure, starting with artificial intelligence plus machine learning, where we have a lot of tools and technologies. So the wide variety of services available in Azure includes artificial intelligence plus machine learning plus analytic services to get and or to give us a good visual of how the data or how the application is performing or the type of the category of data stored and to read from the logs and variety of uh, compute services, different VMs with different size and different operating systems, different containers available, different type of databases available, a lot of developer tools that are available for us and identity service to uh, manage our users in uh, the Azure cloud. And uh, those users can be integrated or federated with 
uh, let's say Google, Facebook, you know, LinkedIn. So they are some external federation services. They can be used to integrate with our identity system, IOTs, IOT services, IOT tools and technologies available and management tools to manage the users, you know, creating identities one and then managing them on top of it is an, a totally different thing. And we have tools, technologies to manage the uh, users. Cool services for a data migration. Data migration is now made simple. Tools and technologies available for mobile application uh, development. And I can plan my own network in the cloud with the networking services. I can implement my own security both Azure provided and third-party security services on Azure cloud that's now possible and a lot of storage options available in the cloud so these are just a glimpse of the big list of services available in Azure cloud so that was a glimpse of what's available in the cloud let's talk about the services in a specific let's take compute for example you know, whenever we're building a new application or deploying existing ones, the Azure Compute Service provides the infrastructure we need to run and maintain our application. We can easily tap in the capacity that Azure Cloud Service has and we can scale our compute requirement on demand. We can also containerize our application we have the option of choosing Windows or Linux via machine and take the advantage of the flexible options Azure provides for us to migrate our VMs to Azure and lot more. And these compute services also include a full-fledged identity solution, meaning integration with Active Directory in the cloud or in on-premises and lot more. Let's look at some of the services that this compute domain provides. Some of the services the compute domain provides are virtual machines. And this Azure virtual machines gives us the ability to develop and manage a virtual computer environment or a virtualized environment inside Azure's cloud environment that do in a virtual private network now we will talk about virtual private network at a later point but as of now just uh, know that there are a lot of services available in azure compute service that we can get benefited from we can always choose from a very wide range of uh, compute options for example you know we have an option to choose the operating system we have the option to choose whether the system should be in on premises or in the cloud or do we want to maintain the environment both in on premises and in the cloud we have the option of choosing the operating system whether we want to use our own operating system with some software attached uh, to it or do we want to go and buy the operating system from the cloud from Azure marketplace and these are just a few of the options available for us when we want to buy the compute environment and these compute environments are easily scalable meaning we can easily scale our VM instances from one instance to thousands of virtual machines in a matter of minutes or simply put in a couple of button clicks and all these services are available on a pay for what we use model, meaning there is no upfront cost. We use the service and then pay for the services that we have used. There is no literal or long term commitment when it comes to using virtual machines in the cloud. And these most of the services are built on a pay per minute billing basis. All right. And at no point, because of the paper minute billing model, at no point we will be overpaying for any of the services. That's, that's attractive, isn't it? Now let's talk about batch service. Now batch service is always uh, independent, regardless of whether you choose Windows or Linux, it's going to run fairly well. And with batch service, we can take advantage of the uh, environment's unique features. And not only that, in short, the batch service helps us to manage the whole batch environment and also it helps to schedule the jobs now this azure batch service is actually runs on a large scale parallel and high performance computing because of that uh, batch jobs are highly efficient in azure and when we run batch services this azure batch 
creates a pool of computer nodes and uh, installs the needed applications that we want to run and then it schedules jobs to those individual nodes in those pools as a customer there is no need for us to install a cluster or there is no need for us to install a software that actually schedules the jobs or even to manage or even to scale those infrastructure or the uh, software because everything is managed by azure and this batch service is a platform as a service there is no additional charge for using this batch service except for i mean the only charges that we'll be paying is for the virtual machines that the service uses and uh, the storage that we will be using of course and uh, the networking services that we will be using for this batch service let's summarize this batch service we have a choice of operating system that we can pick and use and it scales by itself now the alternative for the batch would be queues but in queues uh, we'll have to pre-provision and uh, pay for the infrastructure even if uh, we're not using it but with a batch we only pay for what we use and this batch service helps us to manage uh, the application manage the scheduling as a whole as if they are just one thing as next thing in the compute domain let's talk about this uh, fabric service now this fabric service is actually a distributed system platform that helps us to package deploy and manage a scalable and a very reliable microservice and containers and what does it help this azure fabric service helps us or it helps the developers and administrators so they can avoid uh, the complex infrastructure problems and they can focus only on implementing workloads or taking care of their development taking care of their application instead of spending time on infrastructure so what service fabric service fabric it provides runtime capabilities and uh, life cycle management to applications that are composed of microservices, no infrastructure management at all. And with Service Fabric, we can easily scale the application to tens or hundreds or even to thousands of machines. Here, machines represent containers. As next thing in compute domain, let's talk about the virtual machine scale set. Now, this virtual machine scale set, it lets us to create a group of identical load balanced VMs. I just want to mention it again. It helps us to manage a group identical and load balanced uh, vms the number of instances or the number of vm instances in an in a scale set can increase or decrease in response to uh, the demand or in response to a schedule that we define you know the resources needed on a monday morning is not the same as that would be required on a saturday or a sunday morning all right and even within the day the resources that would be needed in the beginning of the business hour is not the resources that would be needed uh, at noon or you know after eight or nine in the evening so the demands could actually vary in the environment and this skill set helps us to take care of the varying demand or uh, uh, take care of the uh, different infrastructure requirement at a different schedule throughout the day throughout the week throughout the month or could be throughout the year as well the scale set also allows us to provide high availability to our applications and it helps us to uh, centrally manage, configure and update a large number of VMs as if they, they are just one thing. Now you might ask, well, virtual machines are enough. Why would we need a virtual machine scale set? Just like I said, this virtual machine scale set helps us uh, with uh, a greater redundancy and improved performance for our applications. And those applications can be accessed through a load balancer that actually distributes uh, the request to the application instances. So in a nutshell, this virtual machine scale set, uh, it helps us to create a large number of identical virtual machines, number one. And uh, with scale set, we can increase or decrease the virtual machines. With virtual machine scale set, we can centrally manage and configure and update a big group of VMs. And uh, it's a great use case when it comes to big data or uh, container workloads. As next thing in compute domain, uh, let's talk about cloud services. Now this Azure cloud service is actually a platform as a service and it's very friendly. In fact, it is designed for applications that support scalability or an application that requires scalability or reliability and, uh, and on top of it, you want them to be very inexpensive to operate. So Azure cloud service provides all these. So where would this cloud service run? Well, it runs on a VM, but it's a platform as a service. 
VMs are infrastructure as a service and when we run applications on VM through cloud service it becomes platform as a service. So here is how you got to be thinking. With infrastructure as a service like VMs, we first create and configure the environment and then we run applications on top of it. Let's look at the responsibility. The responsibility for us in VM is that we manage everything end to end like uh, you know deploying new patches, picking the versions of the operating system and making sure they are uh, intact and all that stuff. It's all managed by us. But on the contrary, with platform as a service, it's, I mean, it's as if the environment is already ready. All that you have to do is deploy your application in it and manage the platform. I mean, manage the platform not as an administrator because all the administration is taken care by Azure, like uh, you know, deploying new versions of the operating system. It's all handled by the Azure. So we deploy the application and we manage the application, that's it. Infrastructure management is handled by Azure. So what does cloud service provide? This cloud service provides a platform uh, where we can uh, uh, write uh, the uh, application code and we don't have to worry about hardware. Simply hand over the code and cloud service takes care of it. So no worry on the hardware at all. So responsibilities like patching, what do we do if something uh, crashes, how do I update the infrastructure? How do I uh, manage uh, the maintenance or the downtime in the underlying infrastructure? All that is handled by Azure. It also provides a good testing environment for us. You know, we can simply run the code, test it before it's actually released to the production. I want to expand a bit on these testing applications. So this Azure Cloud Service, it actually gives us a staging environment for testing a new release without it affecting the existing release which actually reduces the customer downtime. So we can run the application, test it and anytime that's ready for production, all that's needed for us to do to move it to production is simply to swap the staging environment into the production environment and the old production environment will now become the new staging environment where we can uh, add more to it and then swap it back at a later point. So it, it kind of gives us a swappable environment for testing our applications. And not only that, it gives us health monitoring alerts. It helps us to monitor the health and availability of our application. And there is a dashboard we can benefit from uh, when we use Azure Cloud Services and that shows the key statistics all in one place. And we can also set up real-time alerts to warn when a service availability or a certain metrics that uh, we are concerned about degrades. As next thing in compute domain, let's talk about uh, functions. Now functions are serverless computing. Now many time if you heard about uh, Azure being serverless, a lot of time they are referencing or the person who's talking to you is referencing to serverless uh, computing or Azure Functions, which is a serverless computing service hosted on Microsoft Azure. The main motive of uh, a function is to accelerate and simplify application development. Functions helps us to run code on demand without uh, we need to pre-provision or manage any Azure infrastructure. So Azure Functions uh, are script or uh, a piece of code that gets run in response to an event that uh, you want to handle. So in short, we can just write a code that you need for a problem at hand without actually worrying about the whole application or the infrastructure that will be running uh, that code. And the best of all the best is when we use functions, we only pay for the time that our code runs. So what does functions provide or what does Azure functions provide? Azure functions allow users to build applications using serverless uh, simple functions with a programming language of our choice. So the current programming languages that are supported is C Sharp, F Sharp, Node.js, Java and PHP. So here we really don't have to worry about provisioning or uh, maintaining servers. If a code requires more resource, yes Azure functions handles or it provides the additional resources needed by the code. And the best part is we only pay for the amount of time the functions are running. Not the resources but the amount of time the function is running. As next thing and moving to the new domain let's talk about the container domain in Azure. Now the container domain or the container service uh, it allows us to quickly deploy a production ready Kubernetes or a docker swarm cluster. Now what's a container? A container is a standard unit of software 
that packages of code and all its dependencies so the applications run quickly and reliably from one computing environment to another it could be a testing uh, to staging to developing development environment to staging to production or from one production to another production or on premises uh, to cloud or one cloud to another cloud vice versa now imagine we had an option not to worry about the vm and just focus on the application well that's exactly what containers helps us achieve so these container instances enable us to focus on applications and not worrying about managing vms or not worrying about the learning the new tools required to manage the vms or even the deployment and our applications that we create they run in a container and running in a container is what helps us to achieve all these not being able to manage or not needing to manage the virtual machines so these containers uh, they can be deployed into the cloud using a single command if you're using a command line interface and a, a couple of button clicks if we are using the Azure portal. And these containers are kept uh, lightweight but they are equally secure as virtual machines. Let's talk about container service as next thing. Uh, the container service or uh, sometimes called as Azure Kubernetes service, it helps us to manage the containers. Container is one thing and a service that's used to manage the container is another thing. Now this Kubernetes service or ACS, it helps us to manage the containers. So let's expand on this a bit. So this Azure Container Service or ACS, it, it actually provides a way uh, to simplify the creation, configuration and management of a cluster of virtual machines that are pre-configured to run containerized applications on top of them. Uh, deploying them, deploying these containers might take like 15 to 20 minutes or deploying the virtual machines that run containers in it might take 15 to 20 minutes and once they are provisioned we can actually manage them by using simple SSH tunnel into them and this ACS when it runs application it runs applications from docker images what does that mean a docker images makes sure that the applications the container runs are fully portable images are portable and uh, ACS also helps us to or orchestrate the container environment not only that it also helps us to ensure that uh, these applications that we run in containers can be scaled to thousands or even tens of thousands of containers so in a nutshell managing an existing application into a container and running it using AKS or ACS is really easy or that's what it is all about to make the application management or migration easy now managing the container based architecture and we discussed that uh, containers could be tens or even tens of thousands of containers so managing them is made simple using this container services and even training of model using a large data set in a complex and resource intensive uh, environment this AKS helps us to simplify that uh, environment all right as next thing in container domain let's talk about container registry we spoke about registry a little bit when we spoke about docker images so container registry is a single place where we can store our images which are docker images when we use when we use uh, containers it's it's docker images that we use for our image purposes so these container images are a central registry that can be used to ease container development by easing the storage and management of container images so there we can store all kind of images like uh, docker swarm or the images used in docker swarm or in kubernetes everything can be stored in container registry in azure now anytime we store a container image it provides us an option for geo replication what that means is that we can efficiently manage a single registry replicated across multiple regions now this geo replication it actually enables us to manage global deployments assuming we are having an environment that requires a global deployment so it helps us to manage global deployments as one entity because we are geo replicating we would be updating we would be editing one image and that image gets replicated throughout the global uh, replication centers we would have set up and so just one editing would have actually edited the global images and those global images would have provisioned uh, the global application so one edit replication and then provisioning of the applications 
global wide and this replication also helps us to helps us network latency because you know anytime an application needs to deploy it does not have to rely on a single source which which can be reached only through high latency network because we have global replications around the world anytime the application wants to check back it would check back uh, the application which is in a very nearby location for the application itself global replication means that we are managing it as a single entity that's being replicated across the multiple regions in the globe as next thing in a learning let's talk about um, azure databases now this azure databases are uh, a rational in fact they have uh, many flavors in them uh, we're going to look at uh, different uh, uh, flavors so sql no sql cache type of database that azure offers so we're going to learn uh, one at a time or we're going to learn one by one so this azure sql database is a rational database in fact it's a rational database as a service it's managed by azure we don't get to do a lot of management in it so it's a rational database as a service uh, based on microsoft uh, sql server database engine and this database is a, a high performance database it is very reliable and uh, it's very secure as well and this high reliability high performance and for this high security we really don't have to do anything it comes along with it and uh, it's managed by azure and there are two things that i definitely need to mention about uh, azure sql database that is it's an intelligent service number one it's fully managed by azure and it also has this one good thing which is it has built-in intelligence that learns app patterns and adapts to maximize performance and reliability and data protection of the application that's something that's not found in uh, many of the other cloud providers that i'm aware of so i thought i'll mention it so it uses built-in intelligence to learn about um, the user's database patterns and helps improve performance and protection and migration or importing data is very easy when it comes to azure sql database so it can be readily or immediately uh, used for analytic reporting and uh, intelligent applications in azure as next thing let's talk about azure cosmo db now azure cosmo db is a database service that is for no sql type and uh, it's it's created to provide low latency and uh, an application that scales dynamically or that scales rapidly now this azure cosmo db is an a globally distributed service and it's a multi-model database this can be provisioned in a click of a button that's all we got to do if we need to provision and azure cosmo db in the azure it helps with scaling the database now we can elastically and independently scale throughput and storage across this database and in any of the azure geographic regions it provides a good throughput it provides good latency it provides good availability and uh, it provides or uh, azure promises a, a comprehensive sla that uh, no other database can offer that's the best part about cosmo db so this cosmo db was built with a global distribution in mind and it's built uh, with a horizontal scale in mind and all this we can use by only paying for what we have used and remember the difference between azure cosmo db and the sql database is that azure cosmo db supports no sql whereas sql doesn't all right few other things about azure cosmo db is it allows users to use key value graph a column family and document data it also gives users a number of api options like sql javascript mongodb and and few others that you might want to check in the document at, at the time of reading and the best part here is that all that we mentioned we get to use only by paying for the amount of storage and throughput that are required and the storage and the throughput can be elastically scaled based on the requirement of that are all right let's talk about um, redis cache discussion about azure database won't be complete without we talking about redis cache now redis cache is a, a secure a data cache it's also called it's also sometimes called as messaging broker that provides high throughput and low latency access to data for the applications now redis cache is based on an a popular open source 
caching product which is redis sometimes called as redis cache now what's the use case it's typically used to cache uh, to improve the performance and scalability of a system that rely heavily on backend data stores now performance when we use redis cache is improved by temporarily copying the frequently accessed data to a fast storage located very close to the application now with redis cache this fast storage is located in memory with redis cache instead of being loaded from the actual disk in the database itself now this redis cache can also be used as an in-memory data structure store not only that it can be used as a distributed non-relational database and a message broker so there are variety of uh, use cases for this redis cache and by using redis cache the application performance is improved by taking advantage of the low latency and the high throughput performance that this redis cache engine provides so to summarize this redis cache when we use redis cache data is stored in the memory instead of the disk to ensure that there is high throughput and low latency when the application needs to read the data it provides various levels of scaling without any downtime or interference now this redis cache is actually backed by redis server and it supports uh, a string hashes linked list and various other data structures now let's talk about security and identity services now identity management in specific is a process of authenticating first and then authorizing using security principles now not only that identity management involves controlling information about those principal identities you might ask now what's a principal identity now identity or principal identity are services applications users groups and a lot more the speciality about uh, this identity management is that it not only helps authenticate and authorize principles in cloud it also helps authenticate and authorize principles or resources on premises especially when you run an hybrid cloud environment so all these services and features that this identity management helps us to get additional level of validation like identity management can provide multi-factor authentication it can provide access policies based on condition a permit or deny based on condition it can also monitor suspicious activity and not only that it can also report it it can also help generate alerts for potential security issues and in a way to mitigate it can send us an alert so we can get involved and prevent an a security accident from happening so let's talk more about identity management so some of the services under security and identity management are azure security center now this azure security center provides a security management and threat protection across the workloads in both cloud and in the hybrid environment it helps control user access and application control to stop any malicious activity if present it helps us to find and fix vulnerabilities before they can be even exploited it integrates very well with analytic methods that helps us to identify or it gives us the intelligent to identify or detect attacks and prevent them before it can actually happen and it also works seamlessly with hybrid environments so uh, you don't have to have one policy for on premises and one policy for the cloud it's now a unified service both for on premises and the cloud the next service in security and identity would be key vault now a key vault is a service or a feature that helps safeguard the cryptographic keys and any other secrets used by the cloud applications and the services in other words this azure key vault is a tool for securely storing and accessing the secrets of the environment i mean the secret keys now a secret is anything that you really want to have a very tight control access like the certificates like the passwords stuff like that now if i tell you what key vault actually solves that would actually explain what key vault is now key vault is used in secrets management it's helped in securely storing the tokens the passwords the certificates it helps in key management you know it really helps in creating and controlling the encryption keys that we would use to encrypt data it helps in certificate management talking about certification management 
It helps us to easily provision, manage, and deploy public and private uh, SSL TLS certificates in Azure and a lot more. So in a nutshell, this key vault, it provides users the ability to provision new walls and keys in just a matter of minutes. All that in a single command or all that in a couple of button clicks. It also helps users to centrally manage their keys, secrets and policies. Next in the list, let's talk about Azure Active Directory. Now Azure Active Directory it helps us to create intelligent driven access policies to limit resource usage and manage user identities. But what does that mean? Now this Azure Active Directory is a cloud based Active Directory and identity management service. Now Azure Active Directory combines and you know, it's actually a combination of the core directory services plus application access management plus identity protection. And one good thing about this Azure, in fact, there are a lot of good things, but especially when you're running hybrid environments, you might wonder, well, how this Azure Active Directory is going to behave. Now, this Azure Active Directory is built to work on on-premises and cloud environment as well. Not only that, it also works seamlessly with mobile applications as well. So in a nutshell, this Azure Active Directory, it acts as a central point of identity and access management for our cloud environment. It also provides good security solutions that protect against unauthorized access of our app and the data. Now that we have discussed about security and identity, let's talk about the management tools that Azure has to offer. Azure provides built-in management and account governance tools that helps administrators and developers that helps them to keep their resources secure and very compliant and again it helps both in on-premises and in the cloud environment and these management tools help us to monitor the infrastructure monitor the applications it also helps in provisioning and configuring resources it also helps in updating apps it helps in analyzing threats taking backup of the resources, build uh, disaster recoveries. It also helps in applying policies and conditions to automate our environment. We use uh, Azure management tools and it's also used in cost control methods. So this Azure management plays a wide role across the Azure services. And in the management tools, first comes the Azure Advisor. Now this Azure Advisor, it acts as a guide to educate us about Azure best practices. It throws recommendations that we can select on the basis of the category of service and it also provides the impact it can have or the impact that would happen in our environment if we follow the recommendations given. And recommendations are, uh, first one is the recommendations are kind of templatized and it throws um, the templatized recommendations. Not only that, it also provides customized uh, recommendations on the basis of the configuration, on the basis of our usage patterns. And these recommendations are not hard. It's not like something that it recommends and then just leaves us hanging there. And these recommendations provided are very easy to follow, very easy to implement and see results. You can think of uh, Azure Advisor as an a very personalized cloud consultant that helps you to follow best practices to optimize our deployments. It kind of analyzes our resources, our configurations, our usage, and then it recommends a solution for us that really helps in improving the cost effectiveness, improving the performance, improving high availability, and improving security in our Azure environment. So with this Azure Advisor, we can get a proactive, actionable and personalized best practice recommendations. Now you don't have to be an expert. Just follow the Azure Advisor and your environment is going to be good. It also helps in improve the performance, security, high availability of our environment. And also it helps in bringing down the overall Azure spend. And the best part is it's a free service that analyzes our Azure usage and provides recommendations how we can optimize our Azure resource to reduce cost and reduce cost at the same time boost the performance helps in strengthening the security and improve the overall reliability of our environment. 
And next in the list would be Network Watcher. Now this Network Watcher helps users identify and gain insights in the overall network performance and the health of the overall environment. Now these Azure Watchers provides enough tools to monitor, to diagnose, to view the metrics and to enable or disable logs which means you know, generate and collect the logs for resources in the Azure Virtual Network. So with Network Watcher, you can monitor and diagnose issues in networking without even logging into the virtual machines. With just the logs, which are real-time, we can actually come to a conclusion what could be wrong in a certain resource, in a VM or in a database, you know, by just looking at the logs. And not only that, it's used for analytic or to gain some intelligence of what's happening in our network. We can uh, gain a lot of insight to the uh, current network traffic pattern using the security group flow logs that this network watcher offers. It also helps in investigating VPN connectivity issues using detailed logs. Now, you might or might not know that you know VPN troubleshooting requires both parties or it involves two parties. You know, the person, right, the network administrator on this side and the network administrator on the other side. And they will have to check logs in their end and we'll have to check logs in our end, stuff like that. But with the network watcher, it kind of takes it to the next level. The logs itself, we could easily identify which side is having the issue and suggest an appropriate fix. And the next in the list would be Microsoft Azure Portal. Now, this Microsoft Azure portal, it provides a single unified console to perform various number of activities like building, not only building, managing and monitoring the web applications that we build. Now, this portal can be used to organize our environment or the appearance of the environment or the visual of the environment based on our work style. And using Azure portal, users can control who gets to manage or access the resources all from the Azure portal. And this Azure portal gives a very good visibility on the spends that happen on each resource, right? And if we can customize it, we can also identify spends based on team, spends based on days, spends based on department stuff like that so it kind of gives us a good visual of uh, where the money is spending or where is the bill consumed within the azure environment next in the list would be azure resource manager now azure resource manager enables us to manage the usage of the application resources now we use resource manager to deploy monitor and manage solution resources as a group as if it's one single entity now the infrastructure of our application is typically made of various components which includes virtual machine storage virtual network web app database servers some other third-party services that we might use in our environment and they are by nature separate services but with azure resource manager we don't see them as different components or different entities instead we see them as related services in a group that supports an application now we kind of get the relation between them instead of you know letting them spread azure resource manager identifies the relation between them and helps us to visually see them all as one or single entity not only that azure resource manager helps or it ensures that the resources that we provision are deployed at a constant rate along with the other application it also helps users to visually see their resources and how they are connected and that helps in managing the resources a lot better. Resource group also is used to control who can access the resources within the user's organization. Kind of gives you the fine-grained control over who gets to access and who does not get access. And the last one in the management tools would be automation. And this automation gives us the ability to automate, configure, and install upgrades across hybrid environments. It provides a cloud-based automation and configuration service. Not only that, this can be applied for non-Azure environments as well, which is on-premises. So some of the automation we could do is process automation, update management automation, configuration features automation stuff like that 
And this Azure automation provides complete control during the deployment operation and also during the decommissioning of the workloads and resources. With automation, we can actually automate a time consuming or uh, mundane or uh, any task that's error prone because of uh, human errors. Those things can be automated. So irrespective of how many times you run it, it's going to run the same way. And that really helps in reducing the overall time and also the overhead cost because a lot of the things are automated, which means it's human error free which means the application is not going to break and keep running for a longer time. With automation, we can actually build a good inventory of operating system resources and configuration items all in one place with ease. And this really helps in tracking the changes and investigating the issue. Let's say something happened because we have automation, because it's logging the configuration changes. It's easy to track, easy to identify, easy to identify what has changed lately that has broken the environment. Go back and fix it or kind of roll it back. That solves the problem. And that actually summarizes the Azure management tools or management services. Now let's talk about the networking tools or the networking services available in Azure. There are a variety of services, especially networking services that Azure offers, and I'm sure it's going to be an interesting one. Let's begin our discussion with Content Delivery Network. Now, the Content Delivery Network, in short, CDN, it allows us to perform secure and a very reliable content delivery. Not only that, it also helps in accelerating the delivery time, or in other words, reducing the delivery time, also called as load times. It also helps in saving bandwidth and increases in responsiveness to the application. Let's expand on this. The content delivery network is actually a distributed network of servers that can efficiently deliver web content to users. Now CDNs, we're going to use the word CDN here. CDNs store cached content on global edge servers also called as uh, POPs, point of presence locations that are very close to the end users so the latency is minimized it's like taking a copy of the data or taking a multiple copy of the data and storing it in different parts of the world and whoever is requesting it the data gets delivered to them from a server which is very locally to them so this CDN offers developers a global solution for rapidly delivering high bandwidth content to users by caching the content in a strategically placed location, which is very near to them. So these content delivery networks, it really helps in handling. That's one advantage you get for content delivery network. That's we can handle spikes and heavy loads very efficiently. And we can also run analytic against the logs that gets generated in content delivery network, which helps in gaining good insight on the workflow and what would be the future business need for that application. And this, just like a lot of other services, this is on a pay as you go type. So you use the resource first and then you only pay for what you have used. The next one in networking would be Express Route. Now Express Route is actually a circuit or a link that provides an, a direct private connection to Azure. And because it's direct, it gives low latency link to Azure. It gives good speed and reliability for the Azure data transfer. It could be on premises to Azure. So it gives very good speed. It gives increased reliability and low latency for that connection. Let's expand on this a bit. Now this express route is a service that actually provides a private connection between Microsoft data center and infrastructure in our premises or in a different co-location facility that we might have. Now these express routes uh, do not go over the public internet and because they don't go over the public internet they offer a high security reliability and speed and low latency compared to the connections uh, which are in the internet. Because it's fast, because it's reliable, because it, it has low latency, it can be used as an extension of our existing data center. You know, users are not going to feel the difference whether they are accessing services from an on-premises or in the cloud environment. 
because latency is minimized as much as possible users are really not going to see the difference and because it's a private line and not an public internet line it can be used to build hybrid applications without compromising a privacy or the performance now these virtual private cloud these express routes can be used for taking backups if assume a backup going through the internet that would be a nightmare if you use express route for backups that's going to be fast and imagine recovering a data through the internet from the cloud through the internet to the on-premises in a time of disaster that would be the worst nightmare so these express routes can be used not only to backup but also to recover the data because it provides good speed low latency recovering the data is going to be a lot sooner the next product or service we're going to discuss in networking is Azure DNS. Now Azure DNS allows us to host domain name in Azure and these domain names come with an exceptional performance and availability. Now Azure DNS is used to set up and manage DNS zones and records for our domain name in the cloud. Now this Azure DNS is a service for DNS just like the name says and it provides name resolution by using Azure's infrastructure and uh, by using this domain we can actually manage the DNS ourselves through the Azure portal with the same credential imagine having a DNS provider which does not even belong in our IT imagine that environment you know we would have a separate portal to manage the DNS environment now those are gone and now we can actually manage the DNS in the very same Azure portal where we use the rest of the other services. And this Azure DNS very much integrates with other DNS service providers. It uses a global network of name servers to provide fast response to DNS queries. And these domains are having additional availability compared to the other uh, domain service providers availability promises these are going to have more availability than the rest because most of the servers are maintained by a uh, Microsoft and it helps resolve sooner it helps resyncing let's say a server fails it kind of helps resyncing with the rest of the servers so all the Microsoft's environment all the Microsoft's global network of name servers kind of ensures that our domain names are resolved properly not only properly but also are available most of the time right next in the list in networking services is virtual network I'm sure this is gonna be very interesting and I'm sure you're gonna like it so this networking or virtual networking in Azure it actually allows us to set up our own private cloud in the public cloud it gives us an isolated and highly secure environment for our application let's expand on this then this Azure virtual network helps us to provision Azure virtual machines and uh, it helps us to securely communicate with other on-premises and internet networks it also helps in controlling the traffic that flows through or flows in and out of this virtual network to other virtual networks and to the internet. Now this Azure virtual network sometimes called as VNet is actually a representation of our own network in the cloud. It's actually a logical isolation of the Azure cloud dedicated to our subscription. All our environments are provisioned in a VNet that is separate from another customer's VNet. So that way we have that logical separation there. So this virtual network can also be used to provision uh, VPNs in the cloud. So we can connect the uh, cloud and the on-premises uh, infrastructure and a lot more. Especially in an environment where we have hybrid environment, surely we will be using virtual network because that's going to require a VPN for secure data transfer in and out of the cloud and in and out of the on-premises environment. All right, so it kind of gives us a boundary for all the resources. So all the traffic between the Azure resources, they kind of logically stay in between or logically stay within the Azure virtual network. And here we can design the network. It's given over to us. You know, you can pick the IP, you can pick the routing, you can pick the subnet. And a lot of freedom is given, or I would say 
a lot of control on how the network is designed it's not like something that's already cooked and we only get to use it no we can actually build the network from the scratch we can pick the ip address that we like we can pick you know which subnet needs to communicate with the other subnet stuff like that and like i said if you are using hybrid environment you definitely would be requiring a virtual network because it helps connect the on-premises and the cloud in a secure fashion using vpn the last product we're going to discuss in networking is a load balancer this load balancer actually provides application a good availability and a good network performance so how does it work it actually works by load balancing the traffic to and from uh, the virtual machine and the cloud resources not only that it also load balances uh, between uh, cloud and uh, uh, cross premises virtual networks with azure load balancer we can actually scale our application and create high availability for our services which means our application will be available most of the time if any of the server goes dead the server does not get traffic what happens if the server gets traffic user is going to experience downtime what happens if the server does not get traffic user won't experience any downtime the connection is shifted to an healthy service so the user experiences uptime all the time so this load balancer supports inbound and outbound scenarios and it provides low latency it gives high throughput of the data transfer and we can actually scale up the flow of the TCP and UDP connections from hundreds to thousands to even millions because we have a load balancer now in between the user and the application. So how does it operate? This load balancer actually receives the traffic and it uh, load balances the traffic to the backend pool of instances connected to it according to the rule and the health probe that we set that's how it maintains high availability so what does load balancer help it helps in creation of high available scalable application in the cloud in minutes it can be used to automatically scale the environment with the increasing application traffic and one feature of load balancer is to check the health of the user's application instance and it removes or it stops sending the request to the unhealthy instance and kind of shifts that connection to the healthy instance that way a user or a connection does not get stuck with an instance that's not healthy that's all that you need to know about the networking services now let's talk about the storage services or the storage domain in azure now azure storage in general is a, a microsoft managed service providing cloud storage which basically is highly available secure durable scalable and redundant because it's all managed by azure we don't get to manage a lot of it and these azure storages are a group of storage services they cater different needs and the storage products include azure blobs which is actually an object storage it includes um, azure data lake it includes azure files as you see it in, it includes azure queues it includes azure tables and lot more but let's start our discussion with azure store simple Azure Store Simple is an hybrid cloud storage solution that actually lowers the cost of storage to nearly 60% of how much you would be actually spending without using it. So Azure Simple Storage or Store Simple is an integrated storage solution that manages the storage task between on-premises and the cloud storage. What I really like about Azure is that it's built around a hybrid environment in mind. There are a lot of other cloud providers that are there where running an hybrid environment is a big challenge. You know, it has some compatibility. You won't be able to find an hybrid or a on-premises and cloud solution for you need stuff like that but with uh, azure especially when it comes to storage a lot of the things that we're going to see it clearly is designed with hybrid environment in mind all right so let's come back and talk about store simple so store simple is an very efficient cost effective and a very easily manageable san storage area networking solution in the cloud i thought i'll throw in this information the reason why it got store simple is really because it uses store simple 8000 series devices which are used in Azure data center and this uh, store simple or simple storage it comes along with storage tiering to manage uh, the stored data across the various storage media so the current the very current data is actually stored in on-premises on solid-state drives 
and data that is used less frequently is stored in uh, HDDs or hard disk drives and the data that requires archived or that needs to be archived very old data let's say less frequently used data candidate for archive they are actually pushed uh, to the cloud so you see how this storage tiering automatically happens in store simple and one another cool feature of uh, store simple is that it enables us to create an on-demand and scheduled backups of data and, and then store the data locally or in the cloud and these backups are actually taken in the form of incremental snapshot which means that they can be created and restored quickly it's not a complete backup it's an incremental backup and these cloud snapshots they can be critically important when there is a disaster and when there is a disaster recovery scenario because these snapshots can be called in and they can be put on storage systems and then they become the actual data so recovering is faster if you have proper scheduled backups or if you have frequent backups and this storage simple it really helps in easing our backup mechanism which means it kind of eases our disaster recovery steps or procedures as well so this store simple it can be used to automate data management data migration data movement data tiering across the enterprise both in cloud and on premises it actually improves the compliance and accelerates the disaster recovery for our environment and if there is one thing that's increasing every new day in our environment that would be storage and this store simple addresses that need and we really don't have to pre-plan or, or think in deep or having a proper storage because now we have a simple storage available in the cloud and moreover it's on a pay as you go type so not much pre-planning on storage is needed yes there will be a need but not as much as I would without the cloud or without the simple storage and the next service under storage that we would like to discuss is the data lake store this data lake store or storage it's a cost effective solution for big data analytics in specific so let's expand this so this data lake storage is an enterprise wide repository for big data analytic workload now that's the major service that's dependent on this data lake store and this data lake enables us to capture data of any size of any type and of any ingestion speed and it kind of collects them in one single space or in one single place for operational efficiency I mean operational efficiency and for analytic purpose Hadoop in Azure is very dependent on this data lake storage and this uh, data lake store is designed with performance for analytics in mind so anytime you think of or anytime you're using analytic in the cloud or anytime you're using Hadoop in the cloud in Azure we are definitely using or we will be to the most part or, or the normal procedure or the right storage to pick would be data lake store in Azure it's designed with security in mind so anytime we use Azure storage we can be rest assured that we are using storage from within a data center which has or which was built with security in mind so this data store also uses Azure blob storage behind the scenes for global scale durability and for performance. Let's talk about blob storage. Now blob storage provides large amount of storage and scalability. Now this blob storage is the object storage solution for Azure cloud. Let's expand a bit on blob storage. Azure blob storage is Microsoft offering for object storage. Now this blob storage is optimized for storing massive amount of unstructured data which could be text or binary data it's designed and it's optimized for rapid reads if I explain to you on what scenarios we would be using blob storage that might help you get a good understanding of what blob storage is so it's help or it's designed as of now it's being used in many IT environments to serve images or documents directly to the browser it helps in storing files for distributed access a lot of fetchers can fetch data from Azure blob storage 
and it currently helping users stream video and audio it's currently being used for writing log files it's currently being used to store data as backup and restore at a later point in times of disaster recovery it also is used as an archiving storage in a lot of cloud IT environments it's widely used in storing analytic data not only storing but also running analytic query against the data stored in it so that's a wide use case for blob storage not only that in addition to all that we mentioned uh, it also supports versioning so anytime somebody updates and data a new version gets created which means at any point i can roll back as and when needed and it provides a lot of flexibility on optimizing the user's storage need. It also supports uh, tiering of the data. So based on need, when I actually explore, I would find a lot of options I can pick from that, uh, you know, suits to my unique storage environment or unique storage need. And like I said, it stores unstructured data and this unstructured data is available for customers through REST based object storage environment. The next product and storage service would be queue storage. Now queue storage provides durable queues for large volume cloud services. It's a very simple and a cost effective durable messaging queue for large workloads. Let's expand this queue storage for a moment. Now this queue storage is a service for storing large amount of messages that can be accessed from anywhere in the world through HTTP and HTTPS calls. A single queue or a single queue message can be up to like 24 KB in size and a single queue can contain millions of such 24 KB in size messages and how much can it hold? It can hold up to the total capacity of the storage account itself. So that's kind of easy to translate how much would it hold and this Azure queue storage it provides an messaging solution between applications and components in the cloud what does it help it helps in designing an application for scale it helps in decoupling the application so you know it's not very dependent or sometimes it's not at all dependent on the other application because now we have a queue in between which kind of translates or which kind of connects or which kind of decouples both the environment now we have a queue in between both the environment can scale up or scale down independently the next in the storage service would be file storage Let's talk about file storage. Now these Azure files provide secure, simple and managed cloud file shares. Now with file share in the cloud, it actually extends the user servers on premises performance and capacity and a lot of familiar tools for the cloud file share management can be used along with the file storage that we're talking about. So let's expand a bit on file storage. Now this Azure files or Azure file storage offers a fully managed file shares in the cloud that can be accessed via the SMB protocol server message block protocol. Now this Azure file shares can be mounted concurrently by cloud or in on-premises deployments. A lot of operating systems are compatible with it. Windows are compatible, Linux is compatible, Mac OS is compatible. In addition to all these being able to run on on-premises and on the cloud or being able to access from on-premises and on the cloud, it can also offer cache for caching uh, the data and keeping it locally so it's immediately available when needed. So that's some additional feature, I would say that's some advanced feature that it offers compared to the other file shares available in the market. Let's talk about table storage. Let's talk about table storage. Now table storage is a NoSQL key value pair storage for quick deployments with the large semi-structured data sets. The difference between one important thing to note with table storage is that it has a flexible data schema and also it's highly available. Let's expand a bit on uh, table storage. So anytime you want to pick a schema less, a NoSQL type table storage is the one we'll end up uh, picking. It provides an key pair attribute storage with a schema less design. This table storage is very fast and very cost effective for many of the applications and for the same amount of uh, data it's a lot cheaper when you compare it with the traditional SQL uh, data or data storage. 
So some of the things that we can store in the table storage are, of course, they, they're going to be flexible data sheets, uh, such as uh, user data for web application, address, books, device information, and other types of metadata for our service requirements. And it can have any number of tables up to the capacity limit of the storage account. Now, this is not possible with SQL. This is only possible with NoSQL, especially with table storage in Azure. Explanation of storage really concluded the length and breadth of the explanation this CEO was giving his uh, IT personal. But this IT personal is not done with it yet. He still has a question even after this lengthy discussion. And his question was, well, there are a lot of other cloud providers available. What made you specifically choose Azure? I mean, from the kind of question that he asked, we can say that he is very curious and uh, he definitely had asked a very thoughtful question. So his CEO went on and started to explain about the uh, other capabilities of Azure or how it uh, kind of outruns the rest of the cloud providers. So he started or uh, he again started his discussion, but from a different angle now. So he started to explain what are the capabilities or how Azure is better than uh, the competitors. So he started with explaining the platform as a service capabilities. And I'm going to tell you what the CEO told his ID person. So this platform as a service or in platform as a service, the infrastructure management is completely taken care by uh, Microsoft allowing users to focus completely on the innovation. No more infrastructure management responsibilities. Go and focus on innovation. <laughs> that's that's a fancy way of saying it. When we buy platform as a service, that's what we get. We can contribute our time on innovation and not just maintaining the infrastructure. And uh, Azure especially is uh, .NET friendly. Azure supports the .NET programming language and uh, it has or it is built or designed or it is optimized to work with old and new applications deployed using .NET programming framework. So if your application is a .NET, most of the time you would end up picking Azure. I mean, if you try to compare, most of the time you would end up picking Azure as your cloud service provider. And the security offerings that Azure offers is uh, it's designed based on the security development uh, lifecycle, which is an industry leading assurance process. When we buy services from Azure, it assures that uh, the environment is designed based on security development uh, lifecycle. And like I mentioned many times in the past, and I would like to mention it again, Azure has well thought about the hybrid environments, which a lot of other cloud providers have failed. So it's very easy to set up an hybrid environment to migrate the data or not to migrate the data and still run a hybrid environment. They work seamlessly with the Azure because Azure provides seamless connection across on-premises data centers and the public cloud. It also has a very gentle uh, learning curve. If you look at the uh, uh, documentation, it's picture rich and the documentations are neat and clear. Would really, it would encourage you to learn more. It would encourage you to think and imagine and try easily get a grasp of how services work. So it has a very gentle learning curve. Azure allows the utilization of technologies that several business have used for years. So there is a big history behind it. It has a very gentle learning curve, the, the certifications, the documentations, the stage by stage certification levels. It, it's all very gentle learning curve, which is generally missing in other cloud service providers. Now, this would really impress the CTOs or, or people working in finance and budgeting. If an organization is already using Microsoft software, they can definitely go and avail or be bold and ask for a discount that can reduce the overall Azure spending. In other words, overall pricing of the Azure. So that's what helped or they are the information that helped the CEO pick Azure as his cloud service provider and then the CEO goes on and talks about the different companies that are currently using Azure and they are definitely using Azure for a reason like Pixar, Boeing, Samsung, EasyJet, Xerox, BMW, 3M. They are major multinational multi-billion companies. They rely, run, operate their IT in Azure 
and this CEO has a thought that his IT person is still not very convinced unless and until he shows him a visual of how easy things are in Azure. So he goes on and explains about a practical application of Azure, which is what exactly I'm going to show you as well. All right, a quick project on building an Azure app using or building a dotnet application in azure web app and making it connect to an sql database will solidify all the knowledge that we have gained so far so this is what we're going to do i have an azure account open as you see logged in and everything is fresh here let me go to resource group there's nothing in there it's it's kind of fresh all right i'm logged in and this is what we're going to do so we're going to create an application like this which is nothing but an to-do application a to-do list application uh, which is going to run from the web app get information from us and save it in the database that's connected to it so you can already see it's a two-tier application web and db all right so let me go back to my azure account the first thing is to create an resource group let's give it an a meaningful name let's call it azure simply learn right and it's going to be a free trial and the location pick one that's nearest to you or you know wherever you want to launch your application now for this use case i'm going to pick central us and create it's going to take a while to get created there you go it's created it's called azure simply learn now what do we need we need an web app and an a separate sql database let's first get our web app running so go to app services and then click on add it's not the web app plus sql that we want we want web app alone for this uh, example so let's create an web app uh, give it a quick name let's call it uh, azure uh, simply learn the subscription is free trial and I'm going to use my existing resource group, a resource group that we created some time back. It's going to run out of Windows and we're going to publish uh, the code all set. We can create it. All right. While this is running, uh, let me create my uh, database. All right. SQL database, create a database. Give it a name. Let's call it Azure Simply Learn DB put it in our existing resource group that we created it's going to be a blank database right and it's going to require some uh, settings like the name of the server and the admin login the password that goes along and in which location this is going to be created the server name is going to be azure simply learn db that's the server name and the admin login can be what can be the admin login name let's see so let's call it simply learn. That's my admin login name. And let me pick a password. Click on create. So what have we done so far? We have created an web app and we have created an uh, a database in the resource group that we have created. So if I go to resource group, it's going to take some time before things show up. So if I go to my resource group, I only have one resource group as of now. Azure Simply Learn and there I have a bunch of resources being created you know it's still being created All right in the meantime I have my application right here that's running out of uh, or that's in Visual Studio as of now All right so once the infrastructure is set and ready in the Azure console uh, we're gonna go back to Visual Studio uh, feed these inputs in the Visual Studio, so the code knows what the database is, the the credentials to log into the database, stuff like that. So we're going to feed those information in Visual Studio. By that, we're actually feeding it into the application, and then we're going to run it from there. Deploying these application takes uh, quite a while. We really got to be patient. All right now, we have all the resources that we need for the application to run. Uh, here is my uh, database and here is my app service there's one more thing we need to do that is uh, create an firewall exception rule so one more thing needed is to create an firewall exception uh, rule right so the application is going to run from my local desktop and it's going to connect to the uh, uh, 
uh, database right so let's add an exception rule by simply adding the client IP it's gonna pick my IP the IP of the laptop I'm using as of now and it's going to create an exception uh, to access the database so that's done now we can go back to our visual studio I already have a couple of uh, apps running or a couple of uh, configurations pushed from a uh, visual studio I'm going to clean that up if you're doing it for the first time you, you may not uh, need to do this all right so let's start from the scratch this is very similar to uh, how you would be doing uh, in your environment all right so we're going to uh, select an existing azure app service now before that i have logged in as you can see i have logged in uh, with my credential so it's going to pull few things automatically from my azure account so in this case i'm going to use an existing azure app so select existing and then click on publish All right, if you recall, these are the very same resources that we created a while back. All right, we have clicked on save and it's running kind of validating the code and it's going to come up with an url now initially the url is not going to work because we haven't mapped the application to the database so that would be the next thing All right, so the app has been published and it's running from my web app as of now. It's going to throw an error like you see. It's throwing an error. That's because we haven't mapped the app and the DB together. So let's do that. All right, let's do that. So let's go to Server Explorer. Uh, this is where uh, we're going to see our... Uh, uh, databases that uh, we have created now let's quickly verify that go back to uh, the resource group All right appropriate resource group which is right here and uh, here I have my uh, database Azure simply learn database Right, it has some issues connecting uh, to my database. Give me a quick moment. Let's fix it. All right, so we'll have to map the uh, database into this application. All right, so let's go to the Solution Explorer, click on Publish, and a page like this gets shown. And from here, uh, we can go to Configure. Here is our uh, web app, all right, with all its uh, credentials. Let's validate the connection, number one. All right, and then click on Next. This is my DB connection string, right? Which the app is going to use to connect to my DB. Now, if you recall, our DB was uh, Azure uh, Simply Learn DB, and that's not being shown here. So let's fix that. 
right so let's fix that click on configure and here uh, let's put our uh, db servers uh, url now before that let's change this to sql server all right and then in here uh, put the db's url so go back to azure here is my db or server's name put that here right the username to connect to the server that's right here put that in and the password to connect to the server let's put that in All right it's trying to connect to our azure portal or the azure infrastructure and here is my database if you recall it's azure uh, sldb that's the name of the database let's test the connection connection is good click on ok so now it's showing up correctly azure simply learn db that's the name of uh, the database that we created now it's configured right let's modify the data connections right let's map it to the appropriate database again All right so our name of the database is azure simply learn db and then uh, it's going to be sql server that's the data source. The uh, username is simply learn, and the password is what we have given in the beginning. All right, let's validate the connection. It's good. Click OK. Now we're all set and ready to publish our application again now the application knows how to connect uh, to the database we have educated it with the uh, the correct connection strings the dns name the username and the password for the application to connect to the database so visual studio is building this project and once it is up and running we'll be prompted with an url uh, to connect and anytime we put or we give inputs to the url that's going to receive the input and save it in the database all right so here is my uh, to-do list app and uh, i can start uh, creating to-do list for myself all right, so I have the items already listed. Uh, I can create an entry, and these entries get stored in the uh, in the database. I can create another entry. You know, take the dog for a walk. That's gonna get stored. I can create another entry. Uh, book tickets for a scientific uh, exhibition, and that's gonna receive and uh, put that in the database. And that concludes our session. So through this session, we saw how I can use Azure services to create a web app and connect that to the DB instance and how those two services, which are decoupled by default, which are separate by default, how I can you know, use the connection strings to make connection between the app server and the database and be able to create a working app. I strongly believe you enjoyed me walking you through this session. Let's meet again in another session. Till then, bye for now and take good care of yourself. Hi there. If you like this video, subscribe to the Simply Learn YouTube channel and click here to watch similar videos. To nerd up and get certified, click here.